Heal Rastafari, heal Rastafari, my lords and empresses, princes and princesses, give thanks. All right. Well, I pressed the wrong button, mum, and tried to turn, it, turn the camera around, and, you know, I accidentally turned it off. I was just saying it's a hot fire, so, yep, good, good, um, pause in a 44-minute reasoning. I'm going to see whether or not anybody comes forward from that last reasoning, and, um, again, if you have any questions, free up free up you know so it's a, a frequency of reasoning on anything is good because iron sharpens iron and there's a certain frequency of realizing that answers are there sometimes you just need to ask somebody you know for an outside perspective you know an or an orthodox perspective you know something that's that's uh different you know and sometimes that that going against the grain going against the the normal you know, that which is uh, uh, unusual, you know, can actually bring some, some, some fresh air. So, just want to say give thanks for Rasmo and the questions. I give thanks for, for Brother Miba um, Sion, you know, with the questions and with the subjects and the matters, you know. And, um, you know, I, I, at this moment, I'm open to open the subject up to anything, and we can reason about anything. I'd love to bring somebody else on the camera because a real reasoning has other humans involved. So we're going to go with that if possible. And uh, if not, I certainly don't mind asking questions. We were talking about the importance of systems running correctly. And I've noticed this all over. I was talking to my little brother today, and he was talking about uh, being a nurse in a group of uh, nurses that aren't working as a team. And how if they're not working as a team, he'd rather not be there at all. Because, you know, him as a, uh, a male who's large and a person of color and new, necessarily, may not necessarily want to point out who's not being a team member or being a cannibal or being a team leader when he's brand new. So he'll just say, I don't feel comfortable here and find a group of people that works as a team. Because again, if you don't, if you have a crew but they don't work as a team, what good is it? You know, so there's a certain frequency where it's the same thing in a kitchen. It's the same thing with your brethren. It's the same thing with the United Nations. It's the same thing as a family. You know, if your family don't love each other, talk to each other, acknowledge each other, check on each other, then why do you call them family? You know, why is it United Nations if they ain't united? You know, so there's a certain level where... You know, these things have to be looked at, and the answers for the micro are the same answers as the macro. You know, that's the irony of it, is that, you know, John makes, you know, these things that are simple, you know, for some reason so complicated to those who are not very wise. But they're really simple. Um, so, yeah, uh, Tyler Don, you want to come on camera? Is that a, is that a yeah? Give me a chance to smoke and talk a little bit. So, good reasoning is good new people. I don't care. You know, I don't, you know you don't have to be some veteran. You know, like you could be brand new to Rastafari. You got questions about Rastafari about His Majesty. You know, I'll answer the best I can. You know, I'm uh, always aware that I have a lot to learn. And I appreciate a lot of the ones on Facebook that have actually taught me things as we go. So, hey, I understand, Tyler, if you're camera shy. Uh, honestly, I think if you're not, there's probably a problem with you. I am also camera shy. And, um, you know, I, I have to force myself to be assertive. And I want you to push yourself to have confidence and know that, uh, you know, it's all about uh, you believing in you. Alright, so whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Rest of all right. So, I like that. If you're not camera shy, there's probably something wrong with you. <laughs> so, there's a certain level of looking at, you know, the greater uh, importance of sharing information. You know, and, um, you know, all of it is key. You know, I look forward to sharing the magazine soon. I got a new one in the mail. Uh, Newsweek, 1938. And it's titled, Mr. Tafati. And um, it's remarkable because it shows both the United States and a Great Britain that was in a mind state of appeasement where it was easier to laugh at his majesty 
than it was to actually see the the point he was making, which is that if you allow my country to be invaded, who's next? All of you, Africa's gone now. Europe's going to consume itself. You know? So, you know, that's in a lot of ways what we're watching right now. And that's why standing up for Ukraine actually is important for the United Nations. But because of the system within the UN Security Council, is very unlikely. And that's why you have more of a corporate manner of how to deal with them through NATO and sanctions and banks than actually being able to get consensus because tomorrow's UN resolution, which is the only way that they can actually, as a body of uh, the UN, uh, bring it to the assembly to say that you should have um, a, uh, a military or a joint uh, worldwide stance on a subject. So, you know, it's very difficult to get those things. And particularly when there's a conflict of interest where the judge and jury member is also the person on trial. There's your systematic problem. So, you know, there is no accountability for UN Security Council members. This is the biggest threat to world peace. Because it's like a couple of people that won't let the kitchen work and won't let the hospital work. And now everybody dies. Everybody goes hungry because of five nations all right logan you want to come on camera how you feeling brother i hope you're doing good man i love talking to logan he's a good brethren you know same way if any of y'all want to come on camera just say put you you know just just let me know all right lester all right kendrick because iron teach you know sharpens iron what we just watched is a serious thing i didn't put it in the headings but whatever you all want to reason on you can understand and see how it's all interlinked you know so, you know, blessed love. I'm a reason, you know, uh, as long as the spirit moves me. I kind of liked the ending on that last video because it did get to the point and I don't want to be like something that's just going in a circle. And, uh, and at the same point, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff to, to, to reason on. What I watched today was an absolute breakdown. Live. Planned. Putin intended to drop bombs and invade during the UN emergency session, you know? And there will be no accountability because he's a boss. That's why America can do what they want, because they a boss. That's why China can do what they want, because they a boss. Guess what? I don't want anyone to ever call me boss, all right? I ain't your boss. I ain't your master, you know? And it's like... People need to understand. Don't sit around and be like, yeah, boss. Yeah, boss. You creating classism. All right? That's your brother. It's the same thing. I don't want to be called cousin either. All right? That's, that's a little too far apart. I'm your brother or I'm not. But don't call me cousin. So, you know, that's something, something uh, certain people do to give you a slight. You know, let you know. <clears throat> like brother from another mother. It's like homie. If you ain't from Africa, and we don't have the same mother, you a alien. Alright. Brother from another mother. Things that people say, man. Anyway. Um, so, you know, a lot of meditations. I hope everybody's doing good. Buckle down. Prices are probably going to go up, you know, on everything. If gas goes up, everything going up. And guess who going to be paying? Us. And you know what? They're going to be sitting there talking about this is the protection of sovereignty. You know, I could absolutely argue that the UN didn't get the world to stand up for the protection of Puerto Rico's sovereignty, of Syria's sovereignty, of Palestinian sovereignty, of, uh, of uh, Tibetan sovereignty, of um, Rohingya sovereignty. No, I didn't, I didn't see a world get up like that. No. You know, so there's something fishy, but it's also because you, this is in Europe, you know. So I think there's always been a, um, a sort of, you know, uh, false telling of, of history when it comes down to World War II and Russia. And I think that the narrative we've all been fed about World War II has created this idea of the good uh, war, that there was a clear line in the sand. And I think there's, there's, you know, that's true, you know, to a large degree. But there was also a, a celebration of war. There was a celebration of military power. 
There is a celebration of the soldier and of the glorification of war. And those things have an impact where, you, where people literally call the World War II generation the gre greatest generation. These things are being challenged uh, by a number of people, and they have a good reason to be challenged. And that's because the atrocities and the ways in, uh, that war w was conducted and looked at didn't have the scrutiny or the cameras that they do now. So there's a certain level where war is a lot more real in our face uh, now. And I think that a lot of times people think of this as a technological age, so you don't have the on-the-ground type of war that you will definitely have in Ukraine. And that's because the issues of separatism um, are, they're very interesting because, um, I've seen this in other countries, uh, and it had different actors around it, but what it does is it creates a thing where the country's actually in a civil war that's being, uh, pushed and paved and armed and supported by another nation who's actually there, rather than covertly. And that changes the dynamics and why it's so blatantly illegal. Why it's a complete invasion. Alright, we got a good comment. The war is how they generate power over the resources there. They have a lot of minerals. They have, they have a lot of minerals needed to make their tech technology. That's right. I think that at the end of the day, resources is what's up. Somebody asked, uh, Amoeba asked, what do you think is the actual, uh, you know, real underlying issue why um, this conflict was kind of encouraged and I can't help but think about uh, oil that you know they're trying that the, whoever takes the customers from Russia is gonna <laughs> is gonna make a lot of money and whoever uh, right on Julianne um, and um, and let's um, and and uh, that basically other nations are going to be able to slip in and make that last money off oil before it becomes something the world doesn't want, before it fades out. So if you look at, like, for instance, the finalists in a competition, you know, if you look at OPEC and realize, all right, this is going to be a war uh, to see who makes the last at the end, you know. All right, let's try and bring you on camera. I'm working on it. I press the button. Let's see what happens. More love and life. Thanks for getting back on again. I won't click the finish button by accident. You know? I'm trying to figure out how to bring you on, sis. Give me a moment. Give me another click. If you can request it again, do it. And let's bring on Juliana. It will be great to have a recent with a daughter of Zion. That stuff all right. Let me see. Is that it? There we go. Let's see. We've got, hopefully we're going to have Juliana coming on. And, um, okay. and, and Yes, sir. Rastafari. The last I, 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 bless I, 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 his sister. Wow. Greetings. <laughs> No night in Zion. Rastafari. Yeah, right? Rastafari. Blessed sis. Where are you guys at right now? Um, we on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. British, British Columbia. British BC, Columbia, man. Canada. Rastafari. We're in a BC, man. Look at BC, Herman. I'm turning, it, I'm turning the sound up so I can hear you so clearly. Give thanks and praise. I hope my sound was loud and clear and you were listening. Could I, could you hear me okay earlier? Yeah. All right. You never know. You just start talking to yourself and it's really good to have someone to bounce off of. Like I'm noticing my face seems a little extra close, but maybe that's because half of it's cut off. doesn't really matter. How are y'all doing? Say again, sis. How are y'all doing? I'm not sure if the sound is properly done. Like we're going twice. My first time doing this, so I don't know. I don't All know. right. Well, let's 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 get to work. Let's get in it. You know, I love the African piece in the background. It oh yeah, it's, so cute, man. it's awful. It reminds me of uh, a piece that Bill DeWitt got from forgot uh, gave to Isaac. 
and man it's a beautiful beautiful technique so yes i right, we can talk about anything and if you guys had any if, if i said anything earlier that even you want to add on to uh you know please uh feel free um because um you know the we're a community so let's talk <laughs> So did you see what just happened? Are you guys aware of what just happened? What? Well, basically Russia just invaded uh, Ukraine at, in the middle of the UN emergency session meeting about Russia, which they were actually the president over the meeting and the moderator, which was, you know, they did a pretty good job as far as being the ones on trial, but at the same point kind of being the, the, the mediator and moderator. So, you know, he did lose his shit at the end, you know, when he was told that he will go to hell and there's no redemption for him, which is what ended up happening as the people in the meeting realized that Putin just launched his war in the middle of them trying to find peaceful solutions. And basically, so, it was like, um, can you explain to me why exactly, what does Russia want to Ukraine? Explain why Russia wants to come into Ukraine? Yeah. Uh, for several reasons, one of one of it is that several areas of Ukraine have uh, people who want to separate from Ukraine, and they feel that the Ukrainian government isn't fair to them because they speak Russian, and that historically they've had good relationships with Russia, and they didn't like how 25 years ago they were included into Ukraine when it wasn't part of the contract, so to speak. Okay. So the very nature of how Ukraine got that big was part of a European expansionist plan in which Gorbachev kind of looked the other way and yeah. said, all right, you can take a little, even though he said not one more inch and, you know, you know, both everybody involved in creating these different countries that used to be the USSR, um, they all were trying to take a little extra, you know, and uh, uh, this is why you saw 10 years ago uh, Russia come and take over Crimea and nobody said anything you know it, it was like you know yeah well, it, Russia feels like he owns all those places really well that well that's right I mean if you remember after the USSR separated you know there was a lot of new countries right. you know there were a whole lot of them and you know I think that Russia has been butthurt excuse the language um since world war ii for being not given the credit of being the ones who lost the most troops in world war ii the ones who who actually beat hitler you know that the story wasn't told where russia got the same glory as uh england or france or the united states when russia fought harder and lost more and to lose now more of russia to um uh to the european western ideology uh and having them be independent they i think they felt it was a slight and it was an attack and <clears throat> i also think that like like russia has 11 time zones and not a lot of people and isn't a giant money maker so there's a certain level of like their economic power is not enough to really push things around their biggest power is oil and weapons and so with oil and weapons, they've been able to kind of put themselves in different countries that uh, have given it, uh, you know, a little bit extra power in an age where Iran doesn't have a lot of friends or, you know, they'll work with, you know, countries like North Korea. They'll work with a lot of countries that are closer to it than, say, Europe or, or uh, America. So... So that's that that's one of the things that just hit me in my head today was because every time I hear about Ukraine and Russia, what I really see is why the U United Nations is not working properly. You know, so if they were working properly, there wouldn't be meeting after meeting with no actual ability to come up with something that everyone wants to do. And it's because it's like you got five babysitters that if the babysitter says turn off the TV, TV's off, you know? So, you know, one of the things that we're working on, and it's cool that you're in British Columbia because uh, we have organized a... 
would try to cross the water with them. But <laughs> so if they, it would be easier for bombs are with. <laughs> Can you say that again? I, I'm saying we're right across the water. Uh huh. So it would be easy for them to uh -huh. to send a bomb right across. Like, I, unfortunately, I think that it would be easy for them to send a bomb anywhere. But yeah. also, the United States could do the same thing. And um, you know, it, it's it's. Uh, it would hit us first. Oh yeah, definitely. You're you're up there. You're up there. You're not that far from Russia, and um, you know as far as Albuquerque, we got two thousand five hundred nuclear weapons in the backyard. <coughs> <coughs> so we're definitely on a hot spot. Of if there was um, uh, when if there was a nuclear uh, war, that this is one of the places that probably would be hit because is 2,500 nukes. Right. So it makes sense if you would attack it. And, you know, honestly, there's a lot of us who understand living here. You chose to live here by that, you know? So it's a certain level where, you know, if it happens, I can't say that, like, you know, it, we're all completely innocent. It's like we live in the, ch in the shadow of this. And that's why all New Mexicans should fight to get rid of nuclear weapons out of their own backyard. Because it's, you know, we're five times... Uh, as radioactive as anywhere on earth um and that's because of natural uranium in the ground and then also uh, the the nuclear explosions that we've already had testing nuclear weapons so we we know what it's like to live radioactively okay. so let, let's look at what this comment here says this is from christopher white uh russia is resource poor and they import a lot of food crops there too they have they have to keep their hold on what they have or they will show weakness to the West. China is watching this play out too. Oh yeah, I bet I bet China loves this because their their issue in the North China Sea with America doing the same shit, flying around and having exercises in their waters and you know, it's like how would people feel if like China built a big ass base, military base in Mexico in what is? You know, like this is the stuff that the US does to purposely you know, irritate um, the the world's uh, or big powers. They want to try and see how far they can go. And nations like China and Russia, they ain't playing. You know, they like they said, they the they, they are not the strongest, and it makes a inferiority complexes turn into superiority complexes. You know, notice they're doing it. Sorry, I'm not sure why it's working. Well, it's working on the echo on it. Yeah, just speak slowly, and I think it will pick it up because it kind of breaks up just the voice. Yes, Biba. Got like an echo on our side. Everything you say, it say it's white. Ooh. All right. Well. uh let me throw on uh, another person and then hit me up in five minutes and then uh, we'll see if we have a better connection. I All right, blessed. Give thanks and praises. Both holy. Celestia. Rest of our eye. Rest of our eye. Yeah. So I'm going to send an invite to uh, Christopher. I think there's a lot of islands that, like, you could see whether it's the Philippines, Japan, uh, or Puerto Rico, where the United States being there is for what reason only? It is because it's the closest strategic place to certain uh, uh, people that they think are an enemy. Rastafari, let Jah be praised in the ins and outs and the ups and downs.
King Selassie the first. God bless me. Others, others, at a heart of love. Yes, sir. How are you today, King? I'm doing good. It's nice to nice to see you, man. Likewise, my brother. Likewise. Oh, glory. So yeah, I noticed that you had some great comments, and that you were you've been paying attention as well uh, to uh, the fact that uh, basically the world could not prevent this from happening, and it's because uh, the 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 superpowers of the world do not care about the UN or international law, and that this is really a capitalistic exploit. And do you know anything about what minerals exist in Ukraine? They were, they were right. You got you got like a double playback, like uh, you speak and then that goes back. But I can I can still see what you're asking. There's a list that was just published about all of the resources that you had, how they're a leading producer and a lot of different minerals that we need to produce, like our, our like uh, circuit boards and all the different components that. You think about all the different places that they've been implementing these techniques on, and and you see like there's a certain commonality. They're like small places with military power with lots of resources. You know, same thing that they did to Africa a thousand years ago. You know what I mean? It's like they can take control of it through ideology because they don't have military power. They this ideology on people. They just take control. What do, you, what do you think about the argument that Russia built Ukraine and it's Russian? You know, I think the argument uh, is sad because it doesn't take in, into account the actual people that live there. But again, it's a, lot, it's a lot of people that are affected by a small group of, of, of men and sometimes women you know, make these choices for the masses, you know, and I feel like, I feel like our, our whole world is built on segregation, you know, and the more that people try to set themselves through the technologies that are fed to them from their government, they forget about the relationships they have with the people around them. It's interesting how people will form these, these identities, on these, you know, information portals, They'll be willing to literally kill somebody over it, but if they had that same kind of in place, that they like, they, it's crazy how, how they control people that way. They literally turn them into like a, almost like an evil type. You're, you're, you're right. And I like the way you said that because you really hit onto it, which is not about who built the cities, it's about the people who live there and the importance of what they want and the fact they want independence. They've been independent for 25 years. They have the right to be independent and that's their choice. And that nobody should coerce them one way or another and that they should be protected by the rights of all nations to maintain sovereignty and independence and not be taken over by either another nation or a military coup. So big up my brother, give thanks Christopher because you, you hit it right on the mark. And it is sad, you know, it's sad that this is still going on. And, um, and I think that, you know, a lot of Russians have had a very difficult life. You know, I don't think that uh, you can call it a democracy by any shape or form. And I honestly like a lot of stuff about Russia. I'm not trying to dog Russia. I think it's been scapegoated a lot. You know, I think the term communist is so boring and doled out that like, I don't even think they, that Russians are communists. You know, I think that it's an oligarchy where you have 200 families controlling Putin's money. I think it's mafia run. It's 100% a mob nation. So, you know, a lot like Mexico, it's a cartel nation. Yep. You know, it's not, there's no democracy. You know, well, like, it's deep enough into America, it's the same. Well, and that's that that in a lot of ways is where I find the biggest hypocrisy is that these nations don't try and parade talking about that they're the most democratic, you know, defenders of freedom to ever walk the planet. The United States has the audacity 
to talk about this freedom shit while black people were not just segregated, but classism is how things are run in order so that their monopolies are uh, able to maintain themselves. That capitalism, consumerism, and competition are intricately interwoven into how we perceive our own self-worth. So the nature of what is a good citizen is a productive citizen. It sounds very Chinese all of a sudden. That you're, you're graded on how much you make and your wealth. So this is, you know, uh, so I think that the United States doesn't understand what communism is. I don't think they understand what socialism is. And I definitely don't think they understand what democracy is. So there's a certain level of, you know, uh, you know, you don't have to choose one and you can make up your own. You know, you're not, we don't have to be put in these old systems of thought. And I would argue that the United States is, you know, both socialist as well as democratic, as well as an oligarchy. You know, that there is there's an element of uh, 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 that, um, you know, there's what's the name when corporations run it? An autocracy. So, oh. I, it, yeah, I think it's also an autocracy. So, you know, all of these things are interwoven into, um, you know, into the prison system. You can see it, you know, the, the best, the worst, and the middle all wrapped up in, you know, you can see fascism to not really democracy, but like this pretend element where you're making the laws that put them away. Like you want crime and punishment. When someone does something to you, you want them to go to jail. That is all part of feeding that, that prison mind that you know basically punishment and revenge is is better than um accountability and healing and uh restoration so that's what sacrifice they don't the sacrifice without passing judgment like oh that they don't they don't deserve You're gonna have the society where it's like it's a rat race, bro. You gotta keep for enough. No money's never that is, you know. And it's crazy because all you have to do is, bro. You follow. The Can you talk? It talk slower for us because it's 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 cutting up when you talk faster. When you talk slower, oh. it seems not to cut up. And hopefully, I'm not cutting up when I start talking fast to you. I can hear you, but it's a double play. So like you speak and then it plays it again. So I can still kind of. How annoying. Yeah. It's... But uh, no, I agree with you, man. And I think it comes down to put in all. That's the only way you ever break the. Break the cycle. You know what I mean? Like complain about having to take care of people oh system and i've given up and can't take care of anymore mentally but like if we don't fund now keep you know what i'm saying that's the saddest part of it, is that the youth are what You, I got, I got half of it, and I think I got what you, the gist of what you're saying, and that basically mental illness is not even addressed, and then on top of that, there's a uh, outlook that what you've done is who you are, and that's where you'll always be, and you'll always be that. There's not a, a viewpoint of you can change, or we even care for you to change. You know, it's a cond condemnation process, and. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, what's so interesting is if you've gone to other countries, <clears throat> you realize how far along the American system is. But overall, the societal perspective, particularly if you're a felon. So um, the unique thing about being a felon is you don't know if you can have if you can vote. 
and you don't know if you have to write down on paperwork you're a felon because some felonies get thrown out sometimes you don't have to write it down sometimes you only have to write it down for a certain amount of time sometimes you don't have to write down certain felonies so it gets confusing in the felon's head and so what he does because he doesn't know the law is he disqualifies himself he condemns himself to being a felon who has to write he is a felon on all the paperwork otherwise he could be uh, taken to jail yeah. by doing this he is now bought into he cannot vote and he cannot get certain jobs when in actuality i think it's two-thirds of the felons in this country can vote but don't know they can vote and that's because the state they're in allows felons to vote but a lot of people just don't know it go on i feel this so it's mystic on some levels because micro to macro is actually the same issue is if you don't know the system you don't know why you keep looking at yourself as the problem and not the system as the problem you know we're all trying to save the world in little clusters of whale lovers and dolphin kissers and not realizing that if the ship that's riding you know across the seas is ready to blow you up with nukes do you think they care about the dolphins you know the whole nature of realizing that when you think that you can compromise or work with a system that actually wants to destroy you and this is what i mean about the justice system in america that like we're watching an interesting element of the difference between a real fascist system like really really authoritarian like say like something like egypt or saudi arabia you know like a real fu system no you know like your lawyer might go to jail with you if he pisses the judge off that type of system you know like um you know, so the, the, I, will, I will never forget watching uh, Morsi die in, in front of the cameras as he said a poem about the importance of being free as he was in a cage in front of the judge. You know, that was one of the most um, unbelievably sad moments of my life, uh, watching something live where literally the only democratically elected president in Egypt's history just died in front of everybody from mistreatment of the prisons, of the judge, of the system. And he left saying a, uh, he left saying a poem, you know, about freedom. And even though it may look like it's dead, it's not, you know, so the the fight in the american justice system isn't fair but it's not as bad as other places the actual government of the united states on other countries is as martin luther king said the most dangerous country in the world that undeniably the united states poses the most danger to world security than any country that perhaps has ever existed file the paper and it's okay is well and the the whole nature is, is is the un was there to be to create a a uh system to make sure that there was a regulation on a future you know hitler or a future mussolini you know but the very you know arrogance to think that any of those five nations could not have a crazy dictator come out and now they're giving them the reins over the body you know it's incredibly ignorant you know and it's one of those things where now we actually don't have anything that can regulate you know a future hitler if they come out if they're friends with america or china or russia or france or england let the dictator keep on dictating uh, and you know, you know what's gonna <clears throat> Because when you start, the crops are getting, everything's getting warmer, more pathogens. You look at the countries that import grain, that can't produce grain, can't 
protein source for their people. When things like this, thing, you'll start down and a lot of people are going to want to try and and they're not going to sustain them because they need the you know it's one of those things where America might get hit by it first on the west coast you never know what happens you know what I mean it's these type of really that's right you know one of those those situations and this is what scientists and different analysis have said over and over again, is that even just the destruction of one city, uh, just the power grid, um, simple things. And what's interesting is how much uh, wheat actually Russia provides for um, Asia and uh, Europe. So, you know, the, the way of watching this, when in my personal opinion, they did not give Russia a fair like ability to talk about their actual core problems with what happened 25 years ago. So, you know, it's one of those things where a lot of times like there's old issues of disenfranchisement, which if you don't address those issues, it's going to lead the people right away to walk in an offensive manner rather than being uh, open and defensive. They're, they've already felt like they've been robbed. And so there's a certain level of that was not maturely addressed uh and um meanwhile the united states basically does the same thing and expects a different res uh, result you know if, if you don't think it's fair that russia fill, fills up their their borders with with uh with um with troops then why would you do that to them you know especially when that's the reason they say they're doing it is because that's that you're doing it before so it's like the escalation wasn't that difficult to realize like how to basically put enough pressure on a pimple just to get it enough to burst by itself. You know, a little heat, you know. Anyway, this is not a good analogy. But like the <laughs> point being is, uh, you know, um, and, um, you know, it's, it's just incredible. Right now I'm watching Russia... Uh, uh, it, uh, now saying that they are going to attack military bases, they are attacking military assets. We're going to make this a structure, but the people of Ukraine... Say again? They said they're going to attack military and military infrastructure. The yes. It's just amazing because yesterday they said they're not attacking. So like the very nature of watching, you know, um, the way that, um, you know, in a sense, Putin has been making the sign language that he was going to do this for a long time. But he's also been feeding people what they want to hear. That he knew by dragging along the UN, which I think he is laughing at, um, that... I, I, you know, honestly, the, I, I, I feel very sad to say that it, it seems um, that we're just used to American leaders doing it and uh, Israelis. And so it's almost more shocking, you know, when Russia decides to do it, when in actuality, this is the story of the United States foreign policy. Uh, when it comes down to Afghanistan, which had nothing to do with 9-11. Uh, when it came down to Iraq, which had nothing to do with 9-11, you know, the very pretense of taking over a country, its sovereignty, when the entire world is yelling and begging no. You know, I remember those protests. They were the biggest protests in human history, telling Bush, do not go into Iraq. So the, the nature of, you know, the irony here and you know perhaps a change of system where they realize it's not working for the us it's not working for europe and it's not working for russia and if we could see reform of the united nations simply because the greatest superpowers felt that they were you know disenfranchising themselves that would be super funny ironic and uh, appropriate you know that 
as long as you've got five bullies in the world, even the bully has a bully. You see what I mean? Like even the bully can't stop another bully, you know? And that's what's gonna be world war is if those five nations have a problem. And right now, instead of having a proxy war, they're taking it straight to Russia. You know, Ukraine, you could say is gonna be a proxy war area, but not really. Like they're going, like it wouldn't surprise me if Russia's attacks in the next hour. So there's a certain level where, um, you know, this is somebody who's threatened to bomb with nuclear weapons 12 hours ago or so. This is somebody who is a absolute alpha male, like beyond alpha. Yeah, man, bless it up, Scott Celestia. There's a certain frequency of realizing that because of a lack of order, because we have not pushed to make reforms in the UN, the UN is operating at D minus as usual. And this is a reflection on the UN, uh, the lack of, uh, uh, of actual and fair manners of discussion, as well as uh, allowing five nations to be able to have, you know, uh, Corps de Blanc uh, control. So, sorry to throw some French in there, but uh, yeah, which means that they 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 have uh, one hundred percent, you know, total control. So, you know, I'm gonna throw it out there again since we're talking. Um, you know, if we we need more people involved. And I do absolutely think that when it comes to environmental issues, uh, nuclear uh, uh, weapons and, and disarmament, that the only way this is gonna happen is by reforming the UN. That all other projects will not be able to can be completed as long as you've got this class system of first class and second class nations. And when his majesty said until, there's no longer first class and second class citizens of any nation, let alone first class and second class nations, there's gonna be war. So we wanna prevent war. We gotta bring equality, one for all, all for one, one nation, one vote. Total equality, where the first is the last, the last is the first, the biggest is st the strongest, the smallest, the smallest has got a voice like the biggest. This is what it was intended for. This is real democracy. And until then, you know, we're going to see this type of behavior. So if anybody wants to get involved, reform the United Nations now.com or link me up personally, show that initiative and leadership and that you really do want to get involved. We've got a strong crew in England and Great Britain. We've got a strong crew in Germany. We've got, uh, we've got members in Spain. We've got a strong group in Ethiopia and we've got to run Canada, but we still could use a lot more help because we don't got a lot of people in Canada. We need more help from Canada. So British Columbia, I hope you're listening. So, yep, the eagle and the bear, you already know. So it has already been written in the Bible. You done seen it before when you start looking it up. You know, the same members in this permanent security council is the dragon, the eagle, and the bear. That's right. <laughs> and don't forget the lion that's actually, you know, not... You know, we're not really sure where this lion is. You know, England has a very, Great Britain has a very special place in the world spiritually. And when it comes to France, they know they, they don't belong. So both England and France have already said um, that they don't believe in the UN uh, Security Council's veto power that on a moral level. What they need to do as governments is push. And we're here to help them push. We need people in France and in England. We've got so much good support. The government's really already there. We just need the public and the government to make a little bit more noise and actually tell the UN Security Council members, this is a serious thing. You know, how as a group can we say we don't want the power and either force you all to let go of it or we all agree, just drop it, you know? So that's what we're hoping we'll see. That's what we're working for. And we have a lot of other works, including uh, with the African Union and uh, eventually the European Union. So, you know, it doesn't stop. And um, big up to CARICOM because they're always working on this and uh, they already know, you know, small, small islands, 
can't do a lot by themselves, but together they are very strong. So, just yeah. it's hard here so bad. Back <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna let you go because it's only because we're talking to each other. So, uh, we'll reason soon and I'll call you up and we'll have no echo. But give thanks okay. for the echo in the echo system because everything is an echo. So keep echoing on, all right? Rastafari, shall bless you, my Lord. I will bless you first. All right, guys. I give thanks and praise and I hope it was a good reasoning. And um, yeah. It's a different world for a lot of people. Pray for the world. Pray for Ukraine. Pray for Russia. Pray for Europe. Pray for the whole world. Of course, pray for my peoples in Africa. You know what I'm saying? Because we all peoples from Africa. Don't forget that. All right? Don't forget who you are. Know yourself and realize out of one, we are many. King Celestia. Ja. Rastafari.